Welcome back, Luca Nation, and a uh, different voice to start off this episode today. It's actually Conrad and not Andrew. Uh, I guess I got a promotion of some sorts, but we're back with uh, this Monday's, at this point, it's Monday's episodes of Scouts. Some fantastic playoff basketball has been played. No other teams have moved on yet besides the Bucks, but we have got a couple of pretty close uh, pretty close series, and of course, those will probably be determined later tonight, and by the time this video goes up, um, well, I mean, by then we'll probably already have, you know, the Sixers will have probably moved on, and maybe someone else that I'm just not remembering, but how are you doing today, Andrew? I'm doing amazing, man. Life is good. It's Memorial Day. Uh, we're recording this on Memorial Day, so uh, just take a moment to give a shout out to to the troops, to our country. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how you feel. I don't know how, wait, how you got like to deal with these holidays, but like to me, it's just always a reminder of how fortunate we are. Like we get to yes. live in a country where we could do what we what we want. We get to pursue our dreams, pursue our liberty, uh, and here we are. You know, two guys we've never met uh, creating a YouTube show, a YouTube channel together uh, to entertain people, to educate people, to talk about our passions and our loves. And a lot of that is because of people who have sacrificed for us. And uh, I think it's important to acknowledge that because to me, like I've always just wanted to live the life of my dreams and I was OK to work hard for that as long as like it was possible. And uh, other countries, believe it or not, you know, sometimes we don't remember this, but like other countries don't allow that. And uh, for people who have fought and sacrificed for us to be able to do that, it's a pretty big deal. Yep, 100%. Very, very much a big deal. Um, and I feel the exact same way. They're, I mean, they're protecting us from anything that we may not know about. But then at the same time, the people in the past that obviously have fought for our liberty and, you know, for the freedom and separation from, uh, you know, the British back in the Revolutionary War, stuff like that. It's just, you know, it changes the outcome of our lives even 300 years in the past. Um, but now, are you an are, are you an AP our, student, Conrad? Are you an AP student? Are you doing like those college credit classes? Are you going to, or is that uh, not your thing? Not really, no, <laughs> not not necessarily. Um, maybe maybe like in sixth grade, I would have been smart enough like for for some honors classes and stuff like that. But uh, as the time goes on and the classes get harder, not necessarily, <laughs> not not necessarily. Well, your talents are singing, performing, yeah, skits. Very, you, much. You're much yeah. more of a you're a, you're a new age celebrity. That's that's what like I'm, exactly. I'm watching like this guy Josh Richards. You remind me of him. Like this kid's like 17, 18 years old. He's starting businesses. He's he's in pop culture everywhere. Uh, your guys' generation, man. You guys you guys do it right. You do it right. Maybe I am the next Josh Richards. Who knows? Ha ha. Yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway, now that. Now that we've talked about, you know, living our dreams and stuff like that, let's actually, or living our, working on our dream jobs, let's actually do our dream job and present you guys with some playoff basketball. And the first series that I have that I want to talk about is Suns versus Lakers. It's officially tied up at two to two. Anthony Davis is probably out for game five. And overall, CP3 looked really, really good uh, in game four, in my opinion, at least. Any particular thoughts that you have, Andrew? Before I before I go into this, I'm interested. To hear I have a big said. thought. I have a huge. Yeah. I have a huge thought. <laughs> who who is Anthony Davis like strength and conditioning coach? Like who's in his I inner circle? Who's helping? Who's helping this guy stay healthy? It looks like he's got a new injury every freaking game. Yes, I I don't know. I mean, that's part of why he never wanted to play as the center was because he's very injury prone. Uh, and he knew that if he was banging down low with some of the big boys, he'd probably get injured. <laughs> and that's why he never wants to play as a center. But even as a four, he's still getting injured sometimes, which you, you hate to see as a basketball fan in general. When one of the best players in the league uh, goes down with an injury. Um, but, I mean, man, it's, it's, just, it's a tough break for the Lakers, in my opinion. We talk about guys like Zion being injury prone and all this stuff, but, like, when you really peel back the curtains, this guy's been injured his whole career. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't see – I'm torn. This is a weird series. It, it, the, the teams are bipolar. It's they're, they're bipolar. It's it's hard to predict. On one hand, I want to say there's no possible – let's talk about what we've seen in the past. Sure. These last four games, these last four games, LeBron looks like he's playing at like 70%. He's not attacking the rim at all. He's very casual. He's kind of like a quarterback out there just like directing plays. And how they're 2-2, two and two, I have no idea. Uh, I, I really don't. So without Anthony Davis, I don't see how they could win. But then on the other hand, it's like you'd be foolish to count out 
LeBron versus a very, very uh, young Phoenix team. Mm-hmm. So I'll pass it to you. I mean, maybe I'll defer. Maybe I just didn't even pick a side. It's kind of a cop yeah. out, Andrew. It's disgusting. I'm it's, sorry. It, it sucks to lose a guy like Anthony Davis, but I don't think it's as quite as big of a deal as some people may think. Because here's the thing. In this series, losing Anthony Davis is really not too big of a deal as far as losing a big man goes. Because other than DeAndre Ayton, the Suns have no one that can punish the guys in the paint. Whereas the Lakers have Andre Drummond, Marcus Saul, they obviously had Anthony Davis, right? That's three really big guys, three great rim. And Montrez Harrell. They don't even play. And, we could talk Montrez about that. They don't even play Montrez Harrell. Yeah. And Montrez Did you see the Harrell, tweet? My, Did, uh, no. Let me. Uh, so Montrez Harrell played game one, skipped. He didn't play game two or game three and played five minutes in game four. And he had something to say about that on Twitter today. He might have deleted it. Worst feeling is wasted time. And people were not happy with that. They, he, I don't know, it's very cryptic. I don't know what he means, but I think he should be getting more run. I think my worry with Anthony, my worry with Anthony Davis is that they're not going to have enough, they're not going to score enough points. But I'm sorry, I keep cutting you off, Conrad. Well, and exactly like you mentioned, I mean, like as far as scoring enough points goes, but that's, I didn't necessarily mean by that because, yes. I'm more or less talking about on the defensive side of the ball because they have enough guys that can uh, guard DeAndre Ayton, who's by far been the like most consistent four or five in this entire series, consistently actually playing high levels of basketball. And uh, they're actually they're two and two against a pretty solid Lakers team, fifty uh, fifty. So maybe he should start doing that more often. Uh, it's just one of his biggest criticisms that, that I've always had, and many NBA fans have had uh, for a while. So hopefully, if he continues to play like this, that would be fantastic. But that's besides the point. I do agree with you. Um, losing Anthony Davis is going to be a bit worse for them on the offensive side of the ball. Maybe this does give more time to Montrezl Harrell. I hope it does um, because he's definitely – he's not a fantastic defensive big man, but he can get you some points, be an energizer guy kind of off the bench that just brings uh, brings some fire and brings some life back into a team that may look a bit dead. And that's what I love about him overall. It's, it's crazy because we were talking about does this guy deserve a max contract just this summer – and, uh, and now, I mean, he's barely getting playing time on the seventh seed in the Western Conference, even though they're technically like the one seed type of talent. Um, but he's barely giving, getting any run right now, which is insane to say the least. Um, and something else real quick. Because, go ahead. Well, real quick. In the two wins this series, Anthony Davis has 34 points. In 34 points. Both games, 34 points. In the two losses, he has six points and 13 points. So I, if that doesn't tell the story right there, I don't know what does. Well, and here's the thing. On top of that, Chris Paul, if he is back, that's huge for the Suns team. Huge for the Suns team. You get the guy that is running your entire offense, providing fantastic defense for you alongside Devin Booker, who struggles on that end of the floor. A guy that can hit clutch shots whenever he really needs to. A fantastic mid-range scorer. Fantastic guy can attack the basket and just the point God. Overall, the point god that's that's Chris Paul, right? And he's not he's not like the best player in the league. He's not top five, honestly. Maybe maybe not even top ten. I probably wouldn't even put him in the top ten, right? But like his role as a leader and as as the guy that is the the flow point of your offense, the guy that is directing traffic, that is huge for a team with this much inexperience and for a team that doesn't have any real playmakers besides him. Devin Booker can do it at a pretty good level, but I wouldn't count on him to run an entire offense, in my personal opinion, at least right now. Maybe next year, if he learns a bit from Chris Paul, right? Um, And so getting him back, it's going to just make things even tougher, I think, for this Lakers squad. I'm not going to count them out, but like they're they're in real danger. They're in real danger, in my opinion. Um, I think it's kind of going to come down to LeBron. If he can, if he can get back to ninety percent, hundred percent, then I think that they've got a real shot. But if he can't, then I think that the Phoenix Suns will take this one. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see how these next three games or two. Games I'm going to leave it. Out. I'm going to. I'm going to leave it with this, and we'll move to the next game. I'm bored of LeBron. I'm bored of talking about LeBron. I don't enjoy watching the way the Lakers play. It's the most boring style of basketball ever. Uh, so. All the LeBron haters, you could take that how you want. He's an amazing player, one of the greatest of all time. It, it, it's a parody. It's not fun to watch their games. It's boring. It put me to sleep. I, tr- I turned the, the TV off. Next. All right. All right. The next series, 3-1 lead from the Atlanta Hawks. 
Um, Trey Young. I just, I just, I'm sorry. Like this, this, I've already talked about this, but I, I'm still going to mention it again. Trey Young is the villain and I am all for it. Oh my gosh. It is making basketball so much more entertaining. I think it was, I want to say number episode number four, or number five or three or four. We were talking about how the regular <laughs> season was kind of boring, right? We were like, we hadn't watched as much basketball as we used to. Um, mm -hmm. and this is making me watch more playoff basketball. If Knicks versus Hawks is on, I'm watching it because Trey Young is going to be talking. I'll see you in the A. I'll see you in the A. He'll tell people to shut up. It's just, it is literally like the greatest. Th this is the greatest series out of the entire playoff run strictly for that reason. And not even like, and I like competitive playoff basketball rather than seeing a 3-1 lead, right? It's just fantastic to see i'm all for it. let me ask you what do you think is going to happen with trey young's cards and what do you think is what do you see for this hawks team what do you think about trey young's cards from a sports cards perspective and how far can this hawks team go are you talking strictly for this playoff series or are you talking about like in further in the future for sports cards or in general yeah yeah like giving a like whatever whatever i see like is it for this just this playoff tell me what yeah, what do you think about Trey Young's sport cards, just in general? In general, I mean, look, I think he's taking that step into becoming that upper echelon sort of talent, right? I only consider them to be like there's 10 superstars in the NBA, right? Usually just like the top 10 players, guys that I would be willing to give the keys to the franchise and say, I trust you to lead this team to a championship, right? There's only about 10 or so guys that I would trust to do that. Trey Young is not on that level yet, in my opinion, but he is damn close, and he's officially taking that step from very good – fantastic player to elite right um and i think that not only that the fact that he is being the villain right now and taking on that role is going to probably give his cards a little bit more what's the word i, I incentive another reason to buy it it's going to be a little bit of a bumper factor in his cards prices for as long as he um fulfills this role or maintains this role right because more people are watching him. There's more highlights of him talking trash and getting in people's faces and being the villain. And, of course, most people focus on the highlights. They don't sit down and watch the entire game. He shoots threes. He's a flat, flashy player. He's on a good team. Overall, I think his cars are definitely going to be one of the safer bets that you can make uh, for, you know, not just now, but the next couple of years. Now, specifically for this playoff uh, playoffs, they have a real shot to make a deep run and surprise some teams, right? The fact that they they're probably the best matchup, not the best matchup, but out of besides the Milwaukee Bucks in the East, I would want this team against the um the 76ers as far as matchups goes. Because I think it will be the most even, but I also think that the Hawks have a real shot at winning it. Um, no one's been able to stop Joel Embiid on the Washington Wizards. Clint Capella and John Collins and Anyeke Okongu will all give him at least a little bit of trouble. Not yep. saying they're going to stop him. He'll still probably have like a 30-point game, uh, you know, in two or three of the games, depending on how long the series is. But they're going to cause him some real problems. You have Trey Young, who obviously, like I just talked about him. Um, you've got Danilo Gallinari. you got Bogdanovich off of the bench. Right, you have Chris Dunn, who's a nice, fantastic uh, defensive piece off of the bench. But most importantly, in my opinion, is DeAndre Hunter. He's finally getting yep. more run. Right, he's 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 a fantastic, not necessarily second option, but a fantastic role player as a three and D wing that can also create for himself to an extent alongside Trey Young, and he's really, really, really just excelling in that role. And that could be the X factor overall in a 76ers versus Hawks matchup. Um, now. Granted, it's still 3-1. The Knicks could maybe come back. I'm not expecting to for reasons that I can explain after I'm done here. Um, but, you know, overall, it's looking good for the Hawks and for Trey Young as a whole, in my opinion. Julius Randle, where are you at? Yeah. Are you, you took an early vacation? Yeah, that's just it. Here's the thing. People were saying Julius Randle, oh, he's the next star. Like, he's amazing, fantastic, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, for this season. For this season, right? Because this is the thing. Like, he's he's struggling a lot in this series, and stuff like this is what makes me worried about potentially giving him a con uh, max contract next year. If I was a Knicks fan, um, would be would be stuff like this because it's not guaranteed. It's one season. Maybe next season he falls right back into you know previous Julius Randle. However, I'm not going to blame him because it's not completely his fault, right? However, he is playing atrociously bad. Let me let me just explain. He's shooting twenty six point nine percent. 26.9% from the field and 35.1% from three on 18.3 shots a night. That is 
horrific, first of all. And I think one of the biggest reasons for this is the way that the Atlanta Hawks are playing him defensively. They're not letting him get isolation opportunities. He's a big-bodied guy, and he's kind of started – well, I mean, A, he's been a fantastic three-point shooter this year, and he's become more comfortable with the ball in his hands, meaning he's a perfect player to uh, you know dominate in isolation opportunities. But when you're drawing the double, you can't exactly create opportunities for yourself at a high level, so you have to get rid of the ball or try to force up a bad shot, and that's what's been happening with this team. Um, on top of that, R.J. Barrett's kind of struggling. Their supporting cast is playing pretty poorly. They're not really uh, the same three-point shooting team that they once were, you know, during the regular season. So I, it's not completely Randall's fault. Um, it's a big factor, obviously, in that as their best player this season. Um, but it's just, it's just bad. I would not offer him a max contract, in my opinion, if I was a Knicks fan. Maybe a borderline max or something like that. It's just. <sighs> It's just scary, in my opinion, to, to consider offering him that. And, and, I, and I'm going to give credit to Nate McMillan on that part for doing so well and, and, and making a great game plan uh, defensively for Julius Randle. I think you said it great, man. I really – I think you said it all there. I think uh, I have the Bucks beating the Nets and I have the Hawks beating the Sixers. Mm-hmm. Call yeah, me crazy, think, man. Call me crazy. No, no, I'm not gonna call you crazy. I think that the Bucks can beat the Nets. They're looking really, really good right now. Um, the one thing that I I don't think I mentioned before is when I was talking about them is this year they're switching defensively a lot more. Right? They're going from you know Giannis. Oh, it's like hey, sets the screen. Okay, I'll switch on to your man. Right? And there's no problem with that. You got Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Brook Bro- uh, yep. Brook Lopez, Brook Lopez, uh, PJ Tucker. Dante Dante Mm DiVincenzo when he was healthy. They have a lot of guys that can switch very well on the defensive side of the ball, and that is going to be scary for this Nets squad. Um, I would be very shocked if this probably wasn't like a seven-game series, and it's it's going to be the most exciting series in the entire playoff run, in my opinion. Clippers versus Lakers might be okay or might be pretty good, but it kind of depends on the health of the Lakers, right? So, you know, if that matchup happens, maybe things change, but – I I I I can't wait for a Nets versus uh Nets versus Bucks series. It's going to be fantastic. It's a lot to, it's a lot to talk about. Um Is there a player that stands to gain more from a win than Giannis? This is a monumental series for him. Like if a, he could like beat the Nets or just the Nets. Let's even so championship yes, but let's just even say that he beats the Nets. That's a huge huge milestone I feel like for him. Mm-hmm. But there's one player that I think would uh there's one player that I think would benefit more from upsetting the Nets, LeBron James. Who's that? LeBron James. Wow. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. People have been talking about this for a long time. All oh, this team is a super team. They're fantastic. LeBron's looking injured right now. The Lakers are struggling. Blah 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 blah. The narrative is there. The narrative is there. This and if he beats them in the finals, which is the only time that they can match up in the playoffs, it make it give him five rings. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that would make him the goat, but it would put him a lot closer in that conversation. And then only, he only has one more ring to go to match Jordan. Right. So I think Giannis would be the second most beneficial player from uh, upsetting the nets, but I think LeBron James is number one. I don't think that that's too much of a debate personally. You, you, you still, do you see the Lakers getting there without AD? I'm not, I'm look, I, I, th- Probably not. Probably not. I, I wouldn't be shocked. It Do you see the Lakers there. getting there with a healthy AD? With the healthy AD, yes. I, I had them winning it all with a healthy AD. I'd still, wow. I still would pick them to do that. Now, I, I think it would be – would they win? I'm not completely sure, but I think they could get there. I think they could get there for sure. Um, have, you watched, not, have you watched them play? They look really bad. They look serious. like they're missing a ton they, of shots. They, 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 they lack play. offense. They, they don't even have an offensive scheme from what yeah. I've seen. Uh, Look, I, I just can't have the king until he proves me wrong. I can't. He's okay. proved me wrong year after year after year when I doubted him. If I have confidence in him now and, you know, the team fails, then I then maybe next time next time we get an opportunity like this, I will, I will go back on my word and I will say the Lakers. Let me give you a, a slightly different take. I'm not sure anyone's ever doubted the king. I think oh, no. he's just never won without anybody – Good on his team. He's won with Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade. He won with Kyrie and Kevin Love, and then he won with Anthony Davis last season. I don't doubt him. He just can't. He can't do it on his own. He can't carry yeah. a team on his own. And he could never beat this Nets team on his own. I don't even think that they get to the finals if AD's out. Uh, but anyway, I wanted to talk. Um, 
Wi- Wizards, Sixers, it's pretty much set. But yeah. This is a big deal. This is the kind of stuff that I pay attention to. Uh, two things you said that I want to go. Jeff Green. Jeff Green got injured for the Nets. You see that plantar fasciitis? And the Nets lost one game to the Celtics. This yeah. kind of little stuff, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like it matters, but I pay attention to it because I think it's going to matter in the next series. An extra two days of rest for the Bucks, plus the Nets are missing one of their rotation players. Sure, that's not Durant, that's not Kyrie, that's not Harden, but it's someone that could sub in for Durant, Harden, and Kyrie. And now they're missing a really important piece, someone who's shooting over 40% from the three. So that's one point I wanted to make. Another point with Julius Randle, I would – this is something that I've learned and I recommend people listening to to, uh, to learn as well. And our, our new intern who's uh, clipping moments, if you want to clip this, great. Look behind the stats. Stats don't tell the full picture. So, yes, Julius Randle did put up amazing numbers this year. But look at what tools he has. And tools, I mean, is you look at Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant has three, four, five different ways to score. Julius Randle is a very limited offensive player. He's really only could go to his left hand. His three-point shot is good, but it's only when it's open. You know what I mean? Off a catch and shoot. And if you give him the ball late in the shot clock, he's panicky. He, he doesn't have very many moves to get to the rim other than bullying you. So sometimes look behind the stats. So those are the two things I wanted to touch on. I 100% agree with you there. 100% agree with you there. And I also really agree with the take about Jeff Green because here's the thing, and this is part of why I love Jeff Green and why I would always want him on my team. He's the mo- He's the best piece that you can pretty much have on any franchise ever, like it, it, as a role as far as role players go. He provides you very good defense, excellent three point shooting, overall like a pretty good pretty good scoring load as well, on like one million dollars a year every time, every single time, and he's the most consistent role player. Like that, not that I've ever seen in history, but he is very, very consistent, right? He's just, he's just, he does a fantastic job of, of doing his job. And uh, I, I just love that about Jeff Green. So I wanted to add that in there. Yeah. But here's, here's the one thing I, I bet to LeBron say. wants him right now. I, I'm sure he does. I mean, especially in this situation, 100%. You know, he could at least slip him into the four. I mean, mm-hmm. actually, he'd be really good for that team right now. Um, but here's something that I wanted to say Jason Tatum dropped 50. Right, fantastic game for him. Marcus Smart had 23 as well. Tristan Thompson, Evan Fournier put in a couple of points. And overall, I mean, you know, they were they were struggling a bit still, right? But here's the thing: he drops 50 to win by six. Like this, this Nets team is so dangerous offensively. If they stay healthy, like it's going to be so difficult to beat them. I'm not saying that the Bucks can't. I think that it, no matter what, it is a seven game series, but. We cannot forget that this team has three guys that can just do it all. Yesterday, they had Durant drop 42. I think Kyrie dropped 39. And then Harden dropped 23 and 18. Like, And that's just, that's just their top three. That doesn't include any of their role players or anything like that. This team is so scary. It's so scary. Um, I, I, I just, it's... If anything, if say, anything that, say that again. Three, that's just their top three, is what you were saying. You could out for a that second. That was just that was just their top. That was just their top three guys. That didn't include any role players or anything like that. Their top three guys scored forty-two plus thirty-nine equals 80, 81 plus twenty-three is one hundred and four. And then that doesn't include the eighteen assists Harden had, which could account for between like whatever uh, thirty-six and. I don't know how many points. 54. Times 18. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, I agree. I, I don't disagree. They're incredibly talented individual players. They could all beat you off the dribble. They could pull, they could beat you off the dribble and, and kick it out. I don't disagree. I think it's – I think this is the – when you play against a G League type of Boston Celtics team right now where you're playing third – well, you are. You're, they're, I mean, who's hard to match up with them? No, like, no, I 100% Kyrie. agree with you. After they lost Jalen Brown, I mean, we knew that the Celtics were screwed in this series. I was expecting a sweep. Well, well here's – and I think that's actually a, a great point right there. You were expecting a sweep. I think the next round, the defensive intensity is going to be significantly different than the defensive intensity from the Celtics. The Bucks have better players and better defensive intensity than this current Celtics team can have. And I think – What's going to happen? What you're going to see, especially the first game, is a little bit of a slow start because from the Nets, because you have to adjust 
right? It's kind of like, um, I don't know if you've ever played sports, but I remember we always had very easy preseason games where we'd win 5-6-0 in soccer. We think that they're good because they built your ego. You're like, oh, I'm so good. But when you go out against real competition, you're a little bit lethargic. You're not used to that next level. So, yes, they're putting up amazing numbers against third and fourth string players. I think that's actually going to hurt them against the, the, the Bucks next round. I could agree with that. Uh, at the same time, you could say something similar about the Bucks if you wanted to because, I mean, in reality, while the Miami Heat, you know, like people are calling them bubble frauds and stuff, I mean, they lost Jay Crowder. Bam Adebayo was terrible. Jimmy Butler was actually playing pretty well, but Giannis was absolutely locking him up, so I'll give him 100% credit there. It's gonna be it's gonna be an exciting series. I don't think anyone can really like predict what's going to happen, besides the fact that it's gonna be close and most most likely. Right. Um, I'm excited to say the least. I'm excited to say the least. Um, what we do one, at the show, thing, guys, is we're as much as we predict. What I'm doing is I'm looking for angles, or I'm looking for angles that stack the the table or the deck in the favor of the Bucks, or stack angle. You know what I'm saying? It, it's just because. But both teams are amazing. These are the best. Oh, yeah. Don't forget the NBA playoffs are the NBA is the best 350 players in the world. The NBA playoffs are the best 175 or 100 or 50 players in the world. So like they're all neck and neck with each other the and they're all looking for an edge. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, I want to move on to one thing or move on to a different Please. series. We're Clippers done. I'm, I'm versus, gonna... Clippers versus Mavericks. Down, yes. down, down by two, down by two games. Going into Dallas, everyone's talking about, oh, Clippers suck, blah 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 blah. They're super bad. They're super bad. Like everyone's clowning on them, and respectably so. I don't think anyone really likes the Clippers because of just you know the past year and a half of you know stuff that's gone on with them. Um, but as soon as they won one game in Dallas, everyone shuts up. And why is that? Something that I just said yesterday about, or not yesterday. On our last episode about how 2-0 is the worst lead that you can possibly have. Yes, you have did. NBA. Conrad said that. He said 2-0 is the most dangerous lead. It's, You're absolutely right. And now it is 2-2. Two two. The thing the thing that pissed me off most about fans is that they'll talk crap when they're in the lead, but as soon as, obviously, like the, the matchup gets, it gets even, you know, people people stop talking. And it wasn't even well, like... Well, I let's talk like, about... But, yeah, let's talk about how they got to 2-0 yes. in the beginning of the maps. They shot 35 for 70 from three-point range. Just to contextualize that, that's in two games they shot 50% on 73-point attempts. The the Spurs shoot 10 threes a game, 13 threes a game. So the Mavs shot 73s and they shot 50%. Uh, I've never been a bit – I mean, we've talked about this. We've, we think the Mavs are the most oh, – talent-wise outside of Luka, they're, they're very limited. We've yes, talked about that. You've made an amazing the post. We're supporting casts in the entire league. And what that tells me about you is you're not a believer in Chris Porzingis. No, he's he's a glorified Lowry market and two extra inches on his height. He <laughs> and that was someone that Cage's, step Cage's, I was hoping for better. <laughs> Cage's Cage's play today was uh, Lowry marketing because he's he's being trade looked at uh, on the trade block or he might sign as a free agent with the Celtics. That is understandable. Uh, so, so that's a, a glorified so. So keep talking he's, about the series. So he's a he's he a glorified Lori marketing with two inches on his height. That's a, that's yes, a quote yeah. right there. Akash, please remember that. That's a quote card right there. Yeah, sure. Um, so here's the thing. It, it's overall it's the changes that the Clippers did make as uh, from a coaching standpoint. I have to give Ty Lue some credit because I was giving him some shit last time. He made the proper changes. He stopped giving Zubat so many minutes and stopped utilizing him as much on the offensive side of the ball because he was just looking absolutely terrible. Um, Reggie Jackson is actually playing pretty well, so he kind of does deserve some credit there as well. I'll give him more minutes if he's hot, right? Just give it to him. But most importantly is just how they're handling the Mavericks defensively. Look, you're not stopping Luka. You're just not. You know that for a fact. You can't stop Luka. He's probably going to drop 20 points minimum, get a lot of assists, just do a lot for this team overall, right? But who can you stop? Chris Apps Porzingis, Hardaway, Jalen Brunson, Maxi Kleber, anybody else that is not Luka on this team, you can stop defensively. Yeah. And so, like, it's kind of the same way that I think a lot of people handle the Pelicans with Zion. It's you can go out there and get however many points you want, right? Drop 40 on us. Drop 50 on us. We don't care. The rest of your supporting cast is not going to show up because those are going to be the That's guys that we decide 
to put the absolute clamps on. We are going to focus on them defensively, not you. And while, yes, you scored 50 points, your supporting cast is only going to score 30, and it's going to be a 100 to 80 uh, as far as the game goes. That's going to be the final score, and that's how you win the games. Uh, that's how the Clippers are winning the games in this series. And if they continue to go forward with this, I think they're going to win the entire series. I wouldn't be shocked if they won the next two games straight, especially because they're now going back home to L.A. in the Staples Center, right? Um, I think it was just a fantastic coaching job by Ty Lue. I'm giving him credit. Uh, give credit where credit is due because I was talking down on him before. And uh, Kawhi and PG, playoff P, pandemic P, no, doesn't exist anymore. He's playing very well, and uh, I think people start have to start looking at that. They have to – Think about what they were telling him yesterday, or not yesterday, last year, uh, as as haters of the Clippers and you know giving Paul George his shit because he was playing like complete garbage. Um, he's making you take back your words. He's making you choke on your words. Playing very well this playoff series, and as a Pacers fan, I'm very happy to see that. Uh, so glad to see that because I also like Paul George. I just he's hard to support sometimes <laughs> with the stuff that he says. <laughs> uh, I mean. D- you brought your A game today, uh, Sammy. You, Sammy C, Mr. Conrad, <laughs> little Conrad. Uh, you brought your A game. I, I'll say I loved your analysis. You're not going to stop Luca, but you got to stop the rest of the team. Tim Hardaway had 28 and 21 in the first two games, 2-0 yeah. for the Mavs. Then he had 12 points, and then yesterday's game he had four points. So just to give you some context, uh, so give you some stats to support what Conrad just said. You're absolutely right. Stop. <laughs> Uh, the supporting cast, and I think Tim Hardaway Jr. is a big second option because Kristaps Porzingis is gone. Yeah, he, he averages like half a rebound a game for a seven foot monster. It's unbelievable. Uh, and I agree. I think the the issue and the blessing with the Clippers is they're a jump shooting team. Mm-hmm. So when you're jump, you know, you you win and lose by the jumper. You, you so when when the jumpers are falling, there's not a team I think out there that could beat them. But when those jumpers stop falling and they're breaking, can, can they get to the foul line? Can they get to the rim? Uh, can they group to play some tough defense? I love seeing more minutes for Terrence Mann. I think he's such a more valuable player to this team than Reggie Jackson. Yeah. I, I just don't understand any benefit in Reggie Jackson. If you're going to give – right, like before a game, you know, we have 100 possessions. We're going to have 10 turnovers, so we have 90 possessions. 90 shots. Okay, Paul George gets 22. Kawhi gets 28. How do you justify giving Reggie Jackson 10 to 15? I'd rather so Paul George take 35, and I'd rather Kawhi take 35 shots. Well, the thing is, you don't, give, you don't give Reggie Jackson 10 to 15 shots a game. He just takes them <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> he's, like, he's, he's, he's pretty much a shot chucker, right? Um, and, I mean, he's playing better these past – like the past – this throughout this series, he's playing a bit better, like, overall. Um, now that we've got four games under the, under the belt. So, like – if he's hot, play the hot hand. Like, just because he's Reggie Jackson and he's made his past four shots, you don't just pull him off the court just because he's Reggie Jackson. If he's made four shots in a row, you're like, okay, keep feeding him the ball until he misses, and then once he misses, you can pull him out and replace him, right? Um, but, yeah, he, he shouldn't really get as many shots as he typically does, in my opinion. Terrence Mann definitely needs to be getting more playing time, especially because he's a younger talent and he can be bred and developed into potentially a better player, or not potentially, probably a better player than he is right now, which would be fantastic for this team going forward, right? Um, that's all I have for this series. I do want to move on to the uh, Nuggets versus Blazers series. Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's go. You're up so, right. let's, keep, let's keep rocking. Overall, I mean, just overall, the, the one thing about this series that I have to say is it's going down to the supporting casts. If the supporting cast is a bad night, for either team, Damon Jokic can put up 30, but no one else is really going to do anything. And it's not necessarily like these teams are playing at each other or against each other with really great defensive intensity. It's kind of just whoever's making their shots, right? Because neither team is a great defensive team, although I think that the Denver Nuggets are, are much better on that side of the floor than the Blazers are. Mm-hmm. But it, it really just kind of comes down to whose bench is better uh, that day, right? So that's all I really have to say about the the series. But one thing or one question I want to bring up is, is Nikola Jokic the most unguardable player in the NBA right now? Yes. Is he the most unguardable? I was about to say, I, well, I well, think so too. It, to me, it's so obvious. And I, I, I think if you kind of like put cover their face up, you would agree with this. Jokic is uh, Luka Doncic, but taller. He's a Luka, but just taller. Basically. And bigger, so like, uh, it's he kind of paved the way in a lot of ways for Luca. 
So yeah, absolutely, he's the most unguardable offensive player. It's not yeah. even. Uh, he could do so much. He, yeah, he exactly. could do so much. Yeah, I mean, he he's he's a big body guy, right? I mean, he's seven feet tall, so he plays very well in the post, right? He he has a mid range shot. It's not like it's his most comfortable thing in the world, uh, but he does have a mid range shot. Be, he's willing to take him. He's got a fantastic three point jumper, right? But most importantly of all is his passing, right? He's a pass first player, which is one of my criticism against him as far as like putting him in this unguardable conversation is he is such a pass first guy that sometimes he misses wide open opportunities for scoring, um, which can be a bit of a problem. But then again, when it comes down to this conversation, because he's so good at passing, he can draw the double and still hit an open man 99% of the time, which while yes, you may have stopped him, didn't stop the other guy that just knocked down a three-point shot. You didn't stop the other guy that just attacked the basket, cut into the lane, cut back door. You didn't, you didn't stop that one guy that just uh, came off the screen, hit a three-point shot, right? He's able to find his 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 uh, his other players, his supporting cast, very easily. Um, and, I mean, some of that obviously does come down to his height. And, overall, I wouldn't say he's great at creating his own shot as far as ball handling goes, but he's very comfortable with the ball in his hands. Um and, you know, that, again, is another factor as to why he's, in my opinion, pretty much the most unguardable player in the entire NBA right now. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's all I have to say. Suns, Lakers to, tied up 2-2. Two, two. Trailblazers, Nuggets uh, tied up 2-2. Two, two. And what's the other series? Oh, Clippers, Mavs tied up 2-2. Two, two. We're going to have some fun series coming down the stretch here. It's another episode of Scouts. There we go. Sorry. Conrad, you're a king. Do laundry right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's an end. Peace. Okay, we'll see you guys I, on Thursday.